Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on plants, part one. So we look at kingdom plantae, all of those plants we know and love and we depend on for life. There are a few things we have to get straight about all plants. So these are the reasons why these particular species, these organisms are in kingdom plantae and they're not in the protist kingdom with the plant-like protists. They're multicellular eukaryotic photoautotrophs. Now there are some plant-like protists that are multicellular, but these have specialized tissues. And here are a bunch of them that are in, in pretty much all plants. Cuticle. A cuticle is an outer coating that can be found most abundantly on the leaves. It's a waxy protective coating that helps prevent water loss. And that's very important if you're a plant, water is precious. Vascular bundles. Uh, vascular bundles, the word vascular has to do with water transport, typically. Like our cardiovascular system has to do with moving blood around our body, uh, getting oxygen and nutrients to our tissues, and that's the vascular part of it. So with a plant, it's moving water, it's moving sugar, it's moving those things through fluids throughout all parts of the plant. And if it wasn't for that, how would you have trees that are 100 feet tall? Uh, you need to have that vascularization. There is one kind of uh, plant group I'm going to tell you about in this lesson that is not vascular, but the other things are generally true about uh, that particular kind of plant. And it's much more specialized than plant-like protists, which is why it's in this kingdom. So the xylem, that particular part of the vascular bundle, moves water, H2O. In this leaf, uh, when you look at the leaf veins, that's the vascular bundles we're talking about that are allowing water and nutrients to come in. Uh, the sugar would mostly be going out because this is a photosynthetic uh, tissue. You have a lot of production of sugars there. So sugars entering uh, these little units would actually be mostly going to the other parts of the plant. Uh, but water definitely has to come in in order for them to have um, what they need to do photosynthesis. Now the phloem, another part of the vascular bundle, moves nutrients mainly sugar. And so the flow of phloem, if you want to say that, uh, would actually be from the leaves down. Uh, the water is typically you know, going up because it's coming from the soil. So those two together make up the vascular bundle. And uh, you'll see a, a picture later on in these plant lessons about um, what that looks like. If you were to look in a stem uh, or, or look in uh, a root, uh, what this little unit looks like in terms of the water and sugar flow. Stomata, um, one of them would be a stoma, which in Greek literally means mouth. Here's what it would look like if you zoomed into a leaf. So here is a two cell stoma. And those two things, let me actually make this one bigger so it looks more symmetrical. Uh, these two cells here are called guard cells. They're on guard. And guard cells allow an opening or closing of this little hole. So I'm going to draw um, black here because that's the hole that's leading into the leaf. So you, if you zoomed in with a microscope, you would see stomata scattered all over the leaf. It's literally how plants breathe. The way that they actually get CO2 coming in and uh, water actually can go out and oxygen uh, is through these stomata openings. Basically what happens is water is pumped into the guard cells to expand them. They get puffy and when they get puffy, the hole opens. But when water leaves the stomata, they, you know, kind of get deflated and it closes that opening. Um, so it's really these two guard cells that are responsible for the opening and closing of stomata, also known as leaf pores. All right, and last but not least, this is actually a very important characteristic unique to plants, alternation of generations. And what this has to do with, it's a sporophyte part becoming the gametophyte, the gametophyte leading to the sporophyte, the sporophyte leading to the gametophyte. It's this alternation throughout time. Basically what this has to do with is the sporophyte is 2N and gametophyte is N. And if you remember this from uh, chromosome explanations earlier on in the course, 2N, like for us, would be 46 chromosomes. That's our diploid number. Uh, so N equals 
what is it, 23. So yeah, 23 chromosomes would be our haploid number. The words for diploid and haploid with the plant kingdom is sporophyte and gametophyte. Now, the reason why I say it's unique to plants, it's not an animal thing. And if you're thinking, well, don't humans, don't we make sperm and egg, uh, haploid, and then those combine to make another diploid, another person, and then it keeps going? Yes, but this is different. Alternation of generations means that there's actually a haploid stage, a gametophyte part in the plant that's multicellular. It's a tissue that is haploid. We can't call individual sperm a multicellular tissue. The individual sperm come from multicellular tissues, uh, same with eggs, they come from the gonads, which is a, uh, a diploid structure that has meiosis happening inside of it. But the interesting thing about plants is they will make haploids, the gametophyte generation, that then goes through mitosis to make a multicellular region that is entirely haploid or gametophyte. And then from out of there, you get uh, fertilization, gametophyte with gametophyte, to make the new sporophyte, the new uh, plant. So that is a, a little bit unique uh, compared to the animal kingdom.